I could sew a patch. See you. <laughs> and a oop. I was thinking about uh, my coworker who I caught looking at scantily clad Asian women on his cell phone at work. And I was thinking, should I have said something or intervened and maybe said, have you ever tried a real woman or, <laughs> or tried to relate to him? Like, Steve, I've been there, man. I've, I've trafficked in the, the uh, mature parts of the internet. More like amateur parts of the internet. Right? <laughs> that's a genre. Uh, but should I have said, that's cool, man. Uh, do, can I hook you up with a certain cousin of ours? Uh, Definitely not. No? No. Should I have uh, busted out my crucifix and uh, smacked him in the face with my holy Bible, thrown some holy water on him, had a... a uh, conjuring. Yes. Not an exorcism. Had an exorcism. Get the devil out of ye. Yeah. You're looking at the <laughs> that sin, sinner, sinner. What about those poor girls? That's yeah. somebody's daughter. That's somebody's daughter. That's somebody's sister. And your mom is someone's daughter. And that uh, oop. So speaking of work, uh, this week my coworker grabbed me by the shoulders. Now. It wasn't in any like hostile manner. We we were going for the both. Uh, we work with mail, and I was going for a batch of mail that he was currently working on, which I didn't know. And he just grabbed me on the shoulder. He said, "No, man, I got it." In a joking, jovial fashion. Mm. Uh, but w- why did he touch me? I, I don't understand <laughs> people who have, especially men, uh, who who are touchers. Like you, you could have, uh, we could have engaged in gregariousness with that without. Uh, all this contact. Uh, well, why do you think he did that? Or because he knows, he sees yeah. that you clearly lift. Oh. And he he wanted some excuse to get oh. his hands on your muscles. He's been drooling on my shoulders, he's, over my shoulders. <laughs> he's been seeing your muscles. Yes, and, for months. Yeah, and he was and like, I gotta get my hands on those. Right. And once once the right time, once the opportunity came, yeah. uh, he sees the moment. Yeah. And then. He grabbed my pectoralis majoris and he was like, mm-hmm. wow, my boulder shoulders. Another uh, of my coworkers, like when you cross paths and, hey, how's it going? Hey, how are you? Uh, he'll like give a light, just a light uh, punch to like your shoulder area or mm. uh, b- uh, the back part of uh, your shoulder area. Um, and that's also like. Good job, buddy. You're, like, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like all this touchy feeliness. Well, you're so sexy. Well. It's, and you're so muscular. I'm Everyone wants ir- their hands on you. Yes, I'm irresistible. Uh, but I, so if there was, so you're saying <laughs> if there was uh, a, a coworker of mine who was more, tra- and because it's male to male, they can get away with it. Like, they won't get me too it's But like, if, they, if it was a woman, they're obviously, yeah. they, we can't go there. But if it's another man, they're like. Uh, I can I can touch. It's like the guys in the baseball dugout like hitting each other's butts. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, that's what it's like. But there's probably uh, some baseball players out there who don't like that. <laughs> They're like, why? They, why is uh, Cecil Fielder always hitting me in my butt? That was a baseball player from the '90s, honey. Large man could smack home runs though. Uh, but uh, oh yeah, maybe that's what's going on. Yeah. But. I don't engage in it. (laughs) You don't reciprocate? I don't want none. Right. (laughs) I ain't out here for that. And that oop. So speaking of coworkers, uh, we watched Yellow Jackets. We loved Yellow Jackets, but we didn't have anything to watch after Yellow Jackets. Uh, My coworker, the great Pauly, suggested uh, a television show on Netflix called All of Us Are Dead. And it's a, he's a zombie guy. Like he loves horror and this is, that's what it is. A zombie uh, horror series. Korean, right? Correct. Yes. From Korea. Uh, And so we were like, okay, we're game. And then we watched one episode and uh, what thoughts, feelings, comments, reflections. (laughs) I was underwhelmed. Yeah. 
uh the the zombie genre in general yeah i'm not really into or yeah. impressed by it has to be it has to be unique yeah. or stand out for me to be willing to want to continue with it yeah so we watched one episode of this and then i was like eh, yeah i'm done with this right there it's a 10 episode series and we were like we don't need another nine episodes no. of this you know what like zombies like they used to be slow like they drag their leg and <laughs> they lurch around like walking dead and I would always be like, dude, these zombies are slow. They're not scary. I would just run away. But then, like, after that World War Z Brad Pitt movie, like, all of a sudden, zombies became, like, freaking Olympic runners like Michael Johnson or Carl Lewis or something. Did you like World War Z? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. me too. I was yeah. really into that. I was not into Walking Dead. Ah, I watched. Yeah, because I watched, they were slow and I boring. I watched the pilot, and yeah. then I, I never watched any more of The Walking Dead. I was like, nah, this isn't for me. Oh, really? I dug the first season. Well, the first season was six episodes. I was like, this is cool. But then it just turns into, well, the, the zombies are boring, and mm. they get into, like, the soap opera-ness of yeah. this crew. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I thought there was some cool stuff about All of Us Our Dad. It takes place in a high school. Yes. Um, and they kind of dig into the high school... Uh, roles mm -hmm. um uh your your typical popular person your pretty person your nerd blah blah, blah. Uh, and i was like okay that's a new angle um but yeah after one episode i was like eh, okay uh but then so uh and then and then so i was like well i gotta tell Pauli. uh well i don't want to lie to the kid mm -hmm. uh so I, I i told him on friday uh well i lied to him on your behalf to protect me, honey. So he okay. he he offers himself out there and he says, try this show. And it's like someone showing you a meme yeah. or a song they like or a wacky viral video. And you need to react within expectation. Favorably. Yeah. You yes. don't want to disappoint them. You don't want to hurt their feelings. You got to fake it a little. Yeah. You got to fake it to make it. <laughs> uh, so uh, I saw Pali and I'm like... Uh, yeah, we watched the first episode, uh, and I was digging it, but my wife wasn't digging it, oh. and she said she doesn't need another nine episodes of this, so, <laughs> so, yeah, we're not watching it anymore, so I... I protected me, I protected his feelings, I protected my, uh, friendship with him, uh, I lied on your behalf. I, okay, so I, I was the scapegoat. Yes, they, okay. the, the sacrificial lamb, and I'm okay. sorry... Uh, but I approve of that. It's thank fine. you. Thank you. Well, Pauly, as you know, is very important to me. Uh, I, I love the kid. Um, and he's not the one I caught looking at. Uh, yes. <laughs> no, he is not. <laughs> no, no, he is not. Uh, but yeah, so, so hopefully he comes forward with another mm -hmm. suggestion. And then if we don't like it, then once again, I'll blame you. Yeah. <laughs> I got to face the guy every day. Okay. <laughs> I'm fair game. <laughs> Throw me under the bus. Thank you, darling. And that oop. Uh, you and I were talking about um, uncles and aunts. And I was specifically, I forgot how we got on the subject, but I was specifically talking about uh, my Aunt Partini, who I used to call Aunt Choo Choo back in the day. And I still do sometimes. Uh, but like we, we were in San Diego and Partini's in San Jose. Still to this day, uh, that's what's happening. Um but Partini would come down for a couple of days and it was like an event. Uh, and she would take me to Toys R Us and buy me like a transformer, a $20 transformer, mind blown. Um, but it was, it was, it was a big deal. Um, and then we kind of looked at our, how we are aunts and uncles to many, many Fisher children. And it's just not the same. Yeah, you said your aunt bought you a, a Transformer toy in the 1980s. Yeah. I was like, wow, yeah. that's huge. That yeah. was probably expensive. That oh, was yeah. probably a hot toy. Yeah. And then I thought, I'm a terrible aunt. I yeah. don't do anything like this for my nieces and nephews. Yeah. I adore them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I follow the ones who are on social media. I like their posts. Yeah. My nephews spend the night occasionally. My nieces too once in a while. Yeah. One of my nieces. But I'm not out here buying them hot toys. Right. I'm not spoiling them. I'm not visiting them. Yeah. So then I felt kind of bad. Yeah. But by the way, side note, the, the Transformer was Omega Supreme. 
He was like the bomb ass <laughs> transformer. Like he was an entire base. Like I bet. Was... Lunar, pla- lunar planet moon base kind of deal. Yeah. Uh, it was a giant box. Uh, I love that thing. You could but... probably sell that on eBay today for thousands. <laughs> I right. I don't have it, but I probably could. Um, but uh, yeah, us as uh, we're, we're terrible. I'm terrible. And you're so, terrible. By association, we you're hope, terrible. We hope you have a good terrible today and tomorrow. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm terrible. Yeah. You're terrible. You know what? I don't spoil my nieces and nephews. Yeah. And well, I feel bad. Yeah. Well, the, I, I think the reasoning is that uh, because, one, your your brothers went hog wild and had too many kids. Uh, <laughs> and us being in the same geographical region, Sacramento area, we see them. And, and, it's, and it's not like an event. Like when my, parti- my aunt Partini... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, would, would come down. It was like a huge deal. I guess so, yeah. So you were the only nephew yes. at that time. Yes. And they would come from out of city Yeah. to visit you. Yeah. So, I, okay. I yeah. see that. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, we're, we're terrible, but I think <laughs> it's not our fault. Again, I blame your brothers <laughs> for having too many kids, too many uh, wow chows, too many fishers. <laughs> Uh, and just the the geographic thing. But you know what we have done in the past, which I would like to point out? Mm. We have gone to see my nieces and nephews in plays. Yes. Um, I've been to some sports events that um, my athletic nieces have been in. Okay. I guess... You put, you put the effort? So, yeah. Maybe it's just like the last two or three years. I haven't been like as involved as before what happened two can or three I, years can I ago honey? COVID? yes <laughs> covid uh and i think uh proximity familiarity um and uh another thing is like there we're in sacramento region but we're far yeah like going to see uh brent is like a near half hour um, from everybody yeah like all of my siblings from where we're at is yeah. about 30 to 35 minutes we're all spread out so it can't be something quick and impulsive yeah um but uh well if someone moves away <laughs> if one of your brothers <laughs> moves away and then we go to uh houston texas to visit them <laughs> we'll take them right down to we'll t- <laughs> so we'll, toys r us <laughs> we'll take we'll take uh may right down to the toys r us and get him Get her, sorry, an Omega Supreme or an LOL doll or something, and she'll be excited to see us. Yeah, it's just it's just a different uh, different ways families operate. And plus, I was a little kid, like uh, even I barely see my aunt my aunt Partini now. But if I did, she wouldn't take me to Toys R Us. <laughs> I guess I guess what age do uh, you start? Do you stop just spoiling uh, mm-hmm. your nieces and nephews? Um, and along that lines, yeah. At what at what age, if ever, do you stop addressing your aunts and uncles as aunt and uncle? Yeah, we were talking about this recently. Yeah, yeah. same same conversation, same car, <laughs> same time. Uh, yeah, because I, I I really liked. I mean, I mean, again, I was a kid, but I really like calling Partini Choo Choo. Choo Choo is so fun. Auntie Choo Choo, it is so fun. Auntie Choo Choo. Uh, but as an adult, you grow. You mature and you realize the choo choo, you gotta knock it off. <laughs> but uh, just for like old time's sake, for fun, for cuteness, I'll throw in a choo choo every now and again and, mm-hmm. and it makes her smile. Um, but yeah, like your aunt Kathy and Uncle Paul, you just call it Kathy and Paul. Do you I ever think... throw in an uncle or aunt? I do, I do throw in an aunt and uncle title before their first names occasionally, yeah. but. I've noticed that I often just address them by their first names. Yeah. And I feel like I've done that for quite a while now. Hmm. So is that okay? Is that disrespectful? I think you should take it back and just say <laughs> auntie. And, uh, did you have any wacky names like Choo Choo? Uh, another one of my aunts, uh, not, uh, I called Yang Yang. And then there was Tong Tong. No, I don't. Never had a wacky fun uh-uh. name. Oh, I'll see. That, but you see, I prefer that my nieces and nephews call me Auntie Koo. Ah, which is your general nickname, but it's not like a specific. Uh, not a specific. Cuckoo. Uh, <laughs> choo choo. Coo is just sort of a family nickname yeah. or people who've known me since I was young. Yeah. Call me Coo. Yeah. So I know some of my nieces and nephews call me Auntie Coo. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. So imagine they all of a sudden just call me Carolyn. Carolyn. Hey, <laughs> Carolyn Nicholas. I'd be like, what are you doing? <laughs> 
I think you should take it back. I, could I call? Because I married into this family. Could I call? I, I think I do. Well, I get confused because like uh, Paul and Kathy Lewis are grandparents to some people, right? To some kids, yeah. But they're my yeah. aunt and uncle. Right, right, right. So they're, so, by extension, your aunt and uncle. Okay. By marriage. But then when like uh, whoever, uh, Brandon's kids start calling them grandma and grandpa, is that correct? Uh, no. They're, oh, okay. they're grandkids. Call them that. Oh, okay. Who are their grandkids? <laughs> The uh, Lewises? Yeah, yeah. Like Ryan the and Lewis Stephanie's kids. kids? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hallie. Well, yeah. See, so I so th- th- listen to my uh my uh, tragedy. <laughs> uh I, I married into this family. I I'm an adult. Uh and so I, I they have Paul and Kathy, and then but they're also uh your aunt and uncle. Yeah. And then some kids run around calling them grandma and grandpa, and I'm like <laughs> it's very confusing on my end. You, how about you call them grandpa and grandpa? <laughs> I'll walk around on my knees and pretend to be short and be like, grandma, grandpa. And a uh, oop. So our neighbor, uh, who is a couple doors down, is that is that the correct? Yep. Uh, yeah. Same building. Right. Couple doors. Couple doors that down. That away. In our, in our unit here, in our condominium complex, uh, she... I was t- I was bringing in the trash, and uh, and I see her uh, with her dog. They're on, she's on they're on her uh, front porch. They're getting ready to go for a walk. Okay, whatever. Um, and so uh, at one point, I'm I'm walking behind her. Um, and so she approaches our front door, and I'm like twenty feet behind her. I'm headed back home. Uh, and uh, she's walking her dog, and she's twenty feet in front of me. She and her, her and her dog approach our front door area, and then the dog goes off into our little uh, front yard. It's not our yard per se. Uh, it's like a front. What would you call that? Front terrace. Entryway. <laughs> front entryway, uh, and the dog. And so she lets the dog. Dogs they sniff and they. They're fascinated by everything because they're idiots, but so is our cat. Uh, but and then the dog pees on on like a little stepping stone. So it's not our entryway, like where we walk in and out of our home. It's not on our front door, but it's just off to the side where there's like a little stepping stone there. Um, and the dog pees on it. So it's two feet from our door. It's essentially our front entry doorway area. Yeah, es- essentially. Yeah. And so, okay, so she saw me. She knew I was out there because we said hi or whatever, exchanged uh, greetings. She knew I was out there. She knew I was behind her because at one point she looked back just to, I don't know, make sure I wasn't going to mug her or something. <laughs> I'm very intimidating. I lift, honey. I'm very mm, strong. I'm very mm-hmm. buff. Uh, I can be uh, seen maybe as a threat to a woman. Uh, but uh, I, so, her, so she lets her dog uh, go to the little stepping stone. Dog pees on it. Okay, this is like two feet from our where we walk in and out of our home. Uh, and another thing is that we live, that's called the berm. Berm. Spell it. B-E-R-M. And it's defined as a hill. It's like a, a hill. Okay. Uh, it, perhaps it, a man-made hill because this is a man-made hill. Okay. It's essentially to block the overflow from the river should that happen. Yeah. It's like a flood blockage. Okay. Uh, but it's... My point is that it's about (laughs) 10 to 12 feet from our front door, from our front area. Mm -hmm. Uh, So she could have like yanked on his chain, leash, whatever, uh, and just grabbed him, dragged him, drug him over to the berm so he could have urinated. Yeah. There's a little walkway just next to the berm, 15 to 20 feet away from our front porch. Yeah. And lots of grass, lots of dogs walk by there all the time. Yeah. And they pee, they yeah. poop. If they poop, you pick it up. Yeah. But yeah, she could have taken him there. Yeah. So she knew I was there. She knew I was viewing this. Is this, what, was she throwing it in my face? Does she not respect <laughs> me? Does she not respect our family? No respect. Zero respect. So why, why, why did she do that? It's baffling. I don't know. I would never do that to one of our neighbors. I would be horrified if we peed on their porch. I wouldn't do it 
if uh, if I knew the neighbor was right <laughs> behind me, by <laughs> oh, a feet, you would if they weren't there. Well, the, the things happen, honey, and mm-hmm. it's not the actual entryway. Yeah, uh, it's a little uh, like a decorative stepping stone, or whatever. <laughs> Uh, but the fact that she knew I was around, I know, do I need to lift more? Do I need to look stronger? <laughs> do I need to become more intimidating? She's it's just, it's so bold. Yeah. The boldness and, uh, the zero shame Yeah, it blows my mind. Yeah. I w- well, if the situation was worse, I would have been, I guess you can stop that. Like if you see some, uh, urine coming out, like, dude, yeah. you can yank on the leash and just. That's not nice if you're taking them far but if you're taking them literally 15 feet yeah away yeah then that's cool just like come on doggy yeah you can go does she think that i don't care like <laughs> uh, let's all start peeing on each other's uh entryway front maybe areas. maybe she thought i would understand maybe uh, the dog and her her predicament <laughs> uh i don't know I, I was not a fan of it no and i thought she, well, now that I know she has no respect for me, I have zero respect for her. No respect. Zero respect. And a oop. Okay. The, we did our taxes uh, the other day. Today's Sunday. We did them Saturday. Yesterday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> things blur. We had Friday off. Um, but we, we go to Jackson Hewitt, the local uh, Jackson Hewitt, which is just super close to us on Jefferson Boulevard. Uh, and then... Uh, we had a lady. Should we say her name? No. Okay. Let's call her Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie. Stephanie Lewis. No, just kidding. Uh, let's call her Stephanie. Uh, we had her last year. And that oop. We had her do our taxes last year. She was the only person there last year. This year, uh, there was a front desk person, but not like another tax expert or attorney or whatever. Um but we had her last year, and what do you remember from last year, honey? Because it's basically, it was us and Stephanie at her desk, and we sit there for an hour, and we just stare at our phones. Uh, <laughs> last year, I remember uh, we got there, and she wasn't there yet, yeah. and the doors were locked because she's yeah. the only employee. So yeah. we stood outside for like 10 minutes waiting for her last year. Yeah. That was my number one memory. My number one memory was... So we, we, it takes like an hour, hour 15 to do our taxes. Uh, people were calling and she would pick up the phone cause there's not, there's, she's by herself. She has to pick up the phone and people would call. And I'm sure at Jackson Hewitt, uh, H&R, you get people who want the world delivered to them or they have so many questions that you can't answer on the phone, but, uh, she would answer the phone and start they would start in with, uh, I have a 403C offshore account. I don't know. Uh, but And so she would be like, uh, I'm in the middle of a meeting right now. Can I take your number? And after like four or five calls, she she wrote people's names down and then wrote uh, their phone number. But the promise that, and she'd be like, oh, I'll be done in 20 minutes. And then like 45 minutes, she was right, still with us. That's right. She told all these people calling that she would call them in 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah. Meanwhile, we sat with her for the next hour and a half. Yeah. And she wasn't calling anybody back because she was with us the yeah. whole time. And we were like, this girl's lying. Yeah. And then uh, I made a comment or you made a comment like, so are, are you going to call these uh, five people back? And and then she responded with, uh, I'm off at three o'clock. I don't care after that. <laughs> so she <laughs> so she's talking to these people, writing their names and numbers down, promising a call back. And then uh, once whatever probably 245 let's be honest hit uh she all she left them in the lurch um but i thought it was i I didn't think that was cool that people were just calling up like if people call it should route to some central uh jackson hewitt call center so they could help you with just stupid problems well it wasn't cool that she was the only person in the office that day and she was working with us face to face and yet had to continue to answer phones right yeah um, it also wasn't cool that she gave him the expectation of, I'll call you back in 15 minutes. Yeah. No. Yeah. Girl, that's not happening. Yeah. And then I'm off at three. After that, I don't care about I don't these care. people. <laughs> uh, so this year, again, she was late. Our appointment was at 11. She arrived at 11.09. But thankfully, she had another person there, like a front desk person. Uh, the door was open, so we got to go in. Uh, but she was late, and the front desk person was like, oh... 
Did we say her name? Stephanie Stella. Stephanie Stella. Stephanie Stella. Uh, she's running late and she had to call Stephanie on the phone. Stephanie was like, I'll be there. Like, I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a uh, big difference was that uh, Stephanie now has blonde, hi- blonde highlights oh, in yeah. her hair. Big so, change. Yeah. So she had a glow up. Uh, she's out there. She she uh, broke up with her man. Uh, oh. She's trying to chase a man. She's out there trying to find She a got man. a new man. Yeah, she got a new man. Uh, she, she had fake eyelashes. Yes. They looked fairly new. Yes. She had some cute little boots on. Yes. Last year she had like uh, sneakers. She had sneakers and yoga pants and who cares? We don't care what no. you dress like. But Just give us our return. Okay. Yeah. We don't care. But this year she she was dressed up, so yeah, she's out. She has a new man, or she's trying to get a man, or uh, <laughs> or she just got rid of a man. I'm not sure. Uh, but then, so someone calls her phone, uh, and uh, calls her phone directly, desk phone. She starts talking to him, and the 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 hand the handset is loud that we could hear him. Oh yeah. And then it was an odd conversation where Stephanie got into it with this guy about. Her, fo- her phone not working. It was a very casual, like, right, it was casual. Yeah. So right away I was like, this is not a business call. Yeah. This is some dude. Right. Right. So, <laughs> what is well, your relation? <laughs> it's it's the dude that she got blonde highlights for, honey. <laughs> uh, and, and they start in on, and again, we're trying to get our taxes done. This is a, <laughs> this is a business office. Are you entering our information correctly while you multitask <laughs> talking to this guy? Give us our Biden money. We don't care. But uh, she starts complaining about her phone. So I, I guess what happened is that he tried to call her on her cell phone. She was late to work, so she's not going to take his call or she doesn't have time for that. She's driving. She's late for our appointment. And then he calls her desk phone, gets a hold of her. And then so she's so she starts saying, well, I didn't answer because uh, my phone sucks. I don't like my phone. My phone stinks. And it was like, what? This and- is... And then she's like, you need to get me a new phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So is, is this her Is this her uh, sugar daddy? Yeah. She's like flirting with this guy right in front of us <laughs> while she's entering our W-2 information. Oh, my God. It was, it was, it was comical. Uh, yeah. She was like, you need to get me a new phone. So, uh, so, so this guy supplies her, get, like gives her a. Some some paper money, some spending money. Go out and take, go out and take, go 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 out and buy you something nice, girl. You know what? Her nails were done too. Oh, mm. the eyelashes. She had those acrylic nails. She had those synthetic eyelashes. The shoes, the blonde highlights. She well, she's looking for a specific man who will pay for her new phone. Um, uh, another thing that we noticed in her little cubicle, uh, she had a uh, like a wall calendar up there, and it was. It was uh, uh, it was at November. November twenty twenty one. Yeah, four months old. Yeah, and you think like, uh, tax attorneys or accountants or people who deal with numbers—they're very meticulous and and just uh, always on point. Well, you would hope so. Yeah, till they're handling your finances. Very exact and uh, just on top of everything. But her, she has a calendar <laughs> that's three. Four months old. Oh dear! Very odd. Uh, I was losing hope and uh, faith in this person by the minute yes. as time passed on. And Stephanie, what was her second name? Stella. St- <laughs> Stella. Uh, and then go, going back to the guy on the phone. Uh, uh, again, we could hear what was going on, and he he burped. He burped so loudly. Yeah. Um, we could hear him through the phone piece. Yeah. And then Stephanie said. You know people can hear you, right? <laughs> After he burped, but then she burped because she she was drinking a, a diet coke, a oh can my of soda. Gosh. But she was more subtle. She was more like classy, oh, yeah. like yeah, your yeah. burps, honey. Oh dear, honey. subtle and classy, very ladylike. But yeah, the guy on the phone burping. She was burping, uh, and then another thing that came up was uh, the front desk person interrupted our very important tax meeting. Uh, and she was like, "Oh, you're you're double booked for noon." Yeah, they they let them double book on the on the website. And again, the, the, the <laughs> internet and calendars uh, that shouldn't happen. How did Stephanie get double booked? It was just uh, we were like, oh, "How did this happen? What's happening here?" We're, we're, we're just, let's go down to H and R Block. It just really affects your faith in the person handling yeah. your most important financial transaction of the year. Yeah. <laughs> 
I like <laughs> I want to I want to feel good about what's happening. Yeah. With this. We want to be comforted and this yeah. was like, the entire time we were not comforted. <laughs> we were texting each other back and forth about just uh, the the bizarre uh scene that <laughs> we were in the midst. I texted you this is a disaster. <laughs> yeah. This is a it, w- it was a disaster. Um and then uh but in the end uh she she put in some code and again like cuz I, I think it was like 400 ish bucks last year yeah or uh and then she put in some code and it went down to 300 yeah that's and, what we owe her to do yeah, our taxes correct yeah that right. yeah yeah thank you for cleaning that up um yeah so it was going to be so it was 400 cuz i was like it's going to be like 400 we talked about it ahead of time and then uh, she's like, oh, I got it down to 300. We were like, what? She's like, yeah, I put in some code. And I didn't think it was going to work, but it worked. And I'm not going to ask any questions. And we were like, all right, Stephanie. <laughs> we're not going to ask any questions right. either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off at three. I don't care whether you get audited. <laughs> uh, but And then uh, just a fun fact, or here's a tip. Uh, instead of taking that money so we could have paid that three hundred ish dollars uh, right out of our uh, refund, um, but we, were, I was like, well, I'll just pay it right now, and then she hit some more buttons on her laptop or whatever. It came out to two hundred and fifty five bucks. Yeah. So if you pay in person that day, it's like a sixty dollar uh, savings fee, or yeah, yeah, it's you save some money. Fee, I think she said. It was like, wow. It was like, okay, thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> You can good, burp all you want, good work, girl. Good work. <laughs> good job. Good, good job. job. Good job. <laughs> You're our favorite tax person. You did see. We'll see you next year. <laughs> right. Right. Um, and uh, oh, side note. Uh, so I've I've always heard um, fiscal conservatives, Republicans, <laughs> who say uh, you should write a check to the IRS. Uh, Every paycheck, so you know exactly. Because as opposed to getting a refund, I got a refund for three thousand dollars. Yay! I love the government. But fiscal conservatives, I'm thinking of Jack Armstrong. He used to say things like, "You should uh, write a check to the government every week." So uh, if you owe three hundred dollars in taxes, uh, you should write them a check every week, so you know uh, the the financial. Uh, the money at stake and you should have some 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 skin in the game you should care more about uh government spending uh, so do yeah. you just write that check and then keep it so you like have some idea and then you compare it to what you what happens with your like tax return at the end of the year and that oop the theory is that if you write like paying rent like instead of the government takes out $300 and you don't even see it or hear from it. But if you had to write the check for three hundred dollars, you'd be like, "How is my tax money being spent?" And you okay. would uh, you would care more and just be more into government mm-hmm. wasting money. I get it. Uh, it feels more real, yeah, than just some then, imaginary then, money. Yeah, and then at the end of the year, you're like, "Oh, I get three thousand dollar refund." Well, it's not a refund; it's the government taking too much. Yeah, and then saying, "Here you go." Yeah, uh, that's the right winger <laughs> uh, hot take um but i'm against that i like getting a check for a couple grand uh one time at one time payment so we can uh we can do with it what what we will and yeah the government took too much and yeah mm-hmm. the government wastes a ton of dough i don't care i want my couple grand okay i don't want to think about what they're taking and wasting because i have no control over that i d g a f i don't care and people who do care okay you're just making yourself more depressed and sick (laughs) right you're making yourself miserable (laughs) you're jealous that you're not in on the government gravy train let's be honest um but uh, I like getting the refund. I love getting the refund. Yeah. And spe- <laughs> Obviously. Speaking of the refund, honey, uh, what, tell people uh, what, what are our plans? What, what are we going to do? So we got a little bit back this year. Yeah. A couple and, and our plans are three things. Yes. Well, number one, we would like to take the kids on a little vacation. Yeah. To Disneyland. Yeah, we're looking at Disneyland. Uh, we're trying to work out the numbers. It's like the low end is going to be 1500 to 2000 And then 
you always got to account for more because it's vacation. Oh, it's always more. And um, money doesn't mean anything, speaking of waste. <laughs> so it could be 2500 but uh, we're, we're trying to noodle through that. Yeah. So well, let's go to uh, well, the, yes, the, the more frivolous. <laughs> Frivolous, number two, I want a new vacuum. Okay. It's this vacuum I've had my eye on for like two years. And the price is? It's, I don't remember, $400? 400, yeah. $400, yes, yeah. for this vacuum. Is it a Dyson? No. Oh. It's not a, I think it's a shark. Okay. And uh, Is this, it going to change our life in magical ways? Well, the person who recommended it to me is a uh, social media influencer. Wait a second, is there a promo code? We don't have a promo code. <laughs> no. Uh, well, the reason is she has two cats, and she was like, this is the best uh, vacuum to pick up kitty litter okay. that I've ever used. Uh, so that's, of course, my number one gotcha. concern is yeah. picking up Frankie's kitty litter. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, <laughs> my thing is, uh, well, you you also want to do some maintenance on I would your like, car. I would like my car to get some work done. Yeah. Just make sure it's um, tip-top shape. Yeah. For our trip to Disneyland. For our tri- we- and for the future, just for ongoing yeah. maintenance reasons. Yeah. My mechanic, Josie Contreras. Joe. Joe Jose. 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 Uh, he said, with your Kia, and I guess Kias in general, just do the uh, regular maintenance and you yeah. got nothing to worry about. That's really what like bolstered me into thinking, okay, I need to make sure my car gets maintenance yeah. done regularly. Yeah. It doesn't need, because you have a hundred, over a hundred thousand miles. 110,000 right? miles. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, I want I want slash need to get a deep clean on my teeth. Ten dental work. Yeah, for you. But that's eight G's, and I'm sure we can. Eight up, G's. Yeah. I thought it was a thousand G's. No, it's oh. eight. It's two thousand per twenty five percent because they work on each quarter. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's gonna amount to about eight thousand dollars, which I I know we can do a finance or whatever. Uh, and you also wanted to get a second opinion. And price yeah. on that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we'll have to figure out what we are going to spend yeah. our money on. Yeah. And I have, I'm probably like every American, every person on the planet, uh, I have an Amazon shopping cart uh, in the saved for later section. Mm-hmm. I have like a bean bag, a $110 <laughs> bean bag. Um, I have, uh, there's some cargo shorts that I want so I could wear them for work uh, this summer. Um, so, uh, I want to blow like a couple hundred on just, uh, not nonsense, but, uh, not exactly practical, a little bit of, of a splurge. Um, but yeah, the, the Disneyland is what we're really targeting. Yeah. Um, but I think that's our number one thing yeah. is we want to do a nice family vacation this year. Yeah. But it's so expensive so, and yeah. I wish it was closer. It's whatever, six, seven hours away. Um, and that complicates everything because you got to deal with Los Angeles traffic, um, but uh, yeah, that's that's our plans. <laughs> and again, I like the refund, regardless of what Jack Armstrong thinks slash says. <laughs> Just give me that money. All right, give me, give me. Get, are we done, honey? Yeah, we're done. Let's watch the half full, no Super Bowl halftime show. Yes, coming up the, in a few minutes here. Yes, with uh, Dr. Dre, Snoop. We're living your youth, honey. Eminem, yeah. I know. <laughs> I'm going to be dancing. I'm going to do the sea walk. I don't know how to sea walk. All righty. Well, that's the end of the program. It's been fun, but not really. Let's all try a little harder next time. Like, comment, subscribe, follow, review, and rate. Or don't. Do whatever you want. You're a grown up. Make your own decisions. Do what's best for your family. Please be sure to use our promo code for Sherry's Berries. We don't have a promo code for Sherry's Berries. Goodbye. I love you. We love you. We hope you have a good day today and tomorrow. And sure, I may have said I wanted to throw holy water on my sinning co-worker, but I'm still a good person and we're still good people. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. I hope you have a wonderful day slash night. A ball bye. And a oop. Oop. We got chicken. Is that crispy juicy tender?